So we'll call the meeting to order 602. And first on the agenda is to approve the agenda or make any amendments. I know that the EIC committee, even though they are listed first for the agenda, they, they've asked for an appointment at seven. I don't know if really it makes a difference if we give them an appointment at seven or if they're first on the agenda because it's going to be the same order. Yeah. So when Christy shows Do up. I just leave it the same or? We can always jump easy? around to accommodate Christy when she. But I mean, they had asked for seven and. I mean, at this point, they're either going. Somebody open the door. <laughs> at this point, they're either going last in the appointments or they're going first on the agenda, which is going to be the same time. So exactly. All right. I don't know. I just said that beeping noise is the burglar alarm. Equity and inclusion oh, committee. Equity and inclusion. So don't worry about it. Nobody's changing anything. We're gonna. We were just thinking to make it easy for the agenda. We just leave it alone. Yeah. You guys good with that? Okay. All in favor? <laughs> we're gonna love that noise by the end of the night. Paul, just nod your head tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So first, we have um, talk about the Pleasant Street sidewalk project. So I'll let Therese. So we will enter. This is Chris Lathrop from Du Bois and King. So this is like we remember. This is Lindley Brainerd. This is Chair Chris Jarvis. Denise Gilmet. This is Julie. She's taken the minutes for us. Um, we're missing two members. One is MIA and the other one uh, should hopefully is coming on Zoom. So, and then of course, Rita Cito from Two Rivers is our municipal project manager um, for the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And then I think we, all these lovely people are here for the sidewalk. So that's great. So, so can we, uh, put that yep, I will. Now that Rita told me how <laughs> we're, we're, we're good. Otherwise no can do. All right, let's see if it works. Let's see, how do I, mm -hmm. Rita, how do I make us go away? <laughs> Thank God Rita's here. How do I get rid of, oh, is it under there? Yep, that's perfect. And then I can just slide it up and down. I guess yep. make him make it better for Chris. No, I guess. Oh yeah, that's as good as I can do. I think that Finn's gonna have to work it his magic. Work. Okay. Finn can work his magic. <laughs> as good as I can get. So the purpose of the meeting is to solicit any uh, local concerns um, of the project. Um, but before uh, we switch the slide. <laughs> Oh, there's more. Yeah. I know, I know. I just don't want to do it. So. Maybe just enter or the down there. Oh, you're the, okay. There you go. Enter. He's right. Again. Okay. So, um, like I said, the purpose of the meeting is really to just solicit any concerns um, about the projects. Uh, but before we do that, I just give a brief project overview, a little bit of a project background, um, talk through the project development process that comes along with the federal funding that this project um, has, and then um, ask for any comments and concerns um, and any further questions. So the project um, starts at Sand Hill Road. Whoops. There we go. Oops. I can easily that. Kind of scroll down, but it's grabbing it. I can't. I think you could just hit the enter. Okay. I'm pretty sure. So this is 12A Church Street. We're just around the corner here. Uh, Sand Hill Road and 12A heading north. So the, the project is going to start at Sand Hill Road and continue down to the school. More. So continues along the west side of the sidewalk, that as, as, a, as you all know, is an existing sidewalk that's um, in disrepair and uh, is also very narrow. So that's one of the reasons um, you want to replace it, um, get it a little bit wider. Uh, five foot is normally the, the minimum sidewalk width. Um, 
and uh, rebuilt the curb down through there so it has a proper vertical um, safety for cars. <clears throat> Also, we'll be looking at um, potentially moving the crosswalk from its current location across from Nolato, uh, potentially down into the former Valley Motor Sales area. So that's the project extent. Okay. <clears throat> so again, as you all know, there is an existing bituminous sidewalk. It is very narrow, it's in poor shape. There's an existing, uh, there's two actually existing retaining walls. At least one of those is showing signs of movement and tipping towards the road. Um, the town applied for and was awarded uh, a fiscal year 2022 V Trans Bicycle and Pedestrian Federal Grant, which you were awarded. And then the town has since um, contracted with Du Bois and King to design uh, and build the project. Mm -hmm. So what I'm showing here is with, with the federal funding comes all kinds of bells and whistles that you have to follow. Um, and this is the project <clears throat> flow chart. The project was uh, selected, it was um, approved to proceed, and then, then we were selected as the designers. And then one of the first steps is tonight, the local concerns meeting where we, again, solicit any concerns, thoughts, um, of the project area and things that should be addressed. Um, moving forward, I won't go through all of it, but one of the next steps after tonight, we'll, we'll take your, your information, your, your concerns, we'll um, develop uh, a purpose and need statement that the state has to approve. Um, once that is approved by them, we can move into alternatives where we'll we'll provide a couple different alternatives um, for the sidewalk down through there, um, and we'll be back. We'll come back and we'll present those um, alternatives, <clears throat> and ultimately the town will decide which alternative to go for. And once that's approved, we move into the design process, which takes many steps, including uh, environmental permitting right away. Um, and several design steps along the way. So, next slide. So I guess I would start if you have any questions on what I did go over, and then you can um, you know let us know. I know some of you live along there, so I'm sure you have concerns or thoughts on what well, should happen. <clears throat> <laughs> um, um, the crosswalk, Sand Hill crosswalk, mm -hmm. do they get changed or do they get, um, there's, because the triangle there, the, the, that crosswalk is really sideways and weird, but also there's not really crosswalk across Sand Hill. It, it's ambiguous or whatever. Is that good? Is that on the Because I don't think, because the start, the sidewalk project starts in front of John uh, Gifford's house. Oh. So the, you know, remember where that's all funky right there. I don't think it included right. that. I think okay. that it just started the sidewalk starts, in the straight. Right. Okay. I think it just starts yeah. at Sand Hill. Yeah. On that side. Oh, yeah. So I wondered if yeah. Interested. We did do some new things. I don't know if you noticed. We put up some new signage there just recently. We trimmed branches going to when you cut across and you could take a right. We've had a, uh, four instances where someone has gone straight through onto the person's property. So we put up a big air, yellow sign that has two arrows. We also reinstalled, apparently some, there was a car accident there at some point and there was like root number signs, like that looks like the state had done, but once they got taken down. So we just put those back up too, to try to make that intersectional safer. But you're right, it's, it's a mess. And we may be able to look at that when we redo Sand Hill in the spring. Um, we'll have to take a look at that, like painting a crosswalk and that sort of thing. We'll see what's within the scope of that project that we got the um, money for from the federal earmark. So it is cumbersome. We can see if it's even possible to include in yeah. the area. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. okay. I'm Mary Ellen, and I live at 57 Pleasant Street is my house, and this is Seth. 
She had the big wall. I had the big wall. Like, like answer my question via email, which is really helpful, and I don't want to waste other people's time. But I'm just wondering again, just for more clarification on what, when we get to that phase, what that's going to look like is is there going to be like a lot of stuff in my front yard for four years, <laughs> or, you know that sort of thing. And I feel my dog likes to poop also, <laughs> so just putting that out there. Um, yeah. To be aware. So answer your question. Um, I don't know specifics, and obviously we have to through alternatives. Yeah. But you know, I think the anticipated um, what we'll anticipate doing is a five foot sidewalk there that obviously needs to remove the existing wall and push it back a couple of feet. Um, so during construction, there will obviously be disruption to the to the lawn. Um, but it shouldn't take more than, you know, weeks to months. Um, yeah. yeah. During the, right, exactly. <clears throat> and two is part of that, just so you know, obviously, once we're outside of our right of way, we will be working on, you know, we would approach obviously to get an easement, either a construction easement or a permanent easement. I looked at your deed and I was trying to figure out what, if there was ever an easement there, like who owns the wall? I was always trying to, but it wasn't. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. what. I assumed that too, but I was like trying to find something where it, you know, it said something, but I couldn't, but obviously any, you know, during construction, any disruption, but we would also, whether we needed a temporary construction easement from any one of you or a permanent construction easement, where we are, once we are out of our right away, you know, we we can't just go willy nilly dig about. So we will be approaching you if we need a, a construction easement, uh, temporary or permanent to come back and maintain. So we certainly will, you know, approach you and look at that legally. So, but, and then if the, once the construction is done and cleaned up, part of the bid, and Chris will can assure you of that is it will be seated. It'll be put back. It'll be, you know, and I didn't come back to anything to your lawn after they drilled because we flooded. And then I, I drove by the other day. I'm like, oh, like, well, hopefully she would have emailed if there was a big hole up there. So, but, not, but yeah, no, it will be put back and then, but we don't know what design that will be, whether it's going to be block or there's options. We're going to have less impact and probably the most costly, uh, cost effective too. So, um, but we haven't, we're not there yet. Um, and one other thing that we've already noticed that we'll have to be addressing is how to protect your trees during during construction. Yeah. And then, so just so I understand the scope of the project, it's just it's widening the sidewalk and and replacing that wall, but the road's not widening, right? I mean, the same. Okay. Right. And there's nothing happening on the other side. Right. Not supposed to. Yeah, no, no, nothing no, left me. Yeah. No, we did talk about we were Reed and I were trying to look to see if we could shift so that could we shift the road to get our five feet, but then you know you're monkeying with V trans and that's difficult. But then the other side of the road in sections is not conducive for us to add, you yeah. know, to lean that way. So um so we had to, you know, look at the alternatives and then obviously standing at your wall, you don't realize till you're right there how much it's really leaning in. Yeah. So the little kids who walk on it probably yeah. notice it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Looming over them. Yeah. Okay, we're at 173 Pleasant Street. Um, so you're gonna widen the sidewalk. How much of our lawn is that going to take? I mean, we have trees there, is that going to? Yep, you you do. So um, you live at the Yellow House at yes. the end, closest to GW. Yes. Plastic. Uh, has the smaller wall or the one down? We have no wall. Wall. She has the wall. Yeah, she has. She has the wall. We don't have. So she has. So you don't have any wall no. in front of yours. No. no, it's just an No, the line just falls down to the sidewalk. Yeah. But yeah, she, they do have the one. They're the ones with the big tree. Yeah, okay. it's a big tree. Yeah. So I mean, just the one three and a half, four feet wide, and we're going to. Five feet wide, they have a, you know, at least a small level panel beyond that, and then and then slope back up to meet wherever you're you want it to be. Oh, be the intent. So, we, but we haven't we haven't got there yet with the design. Is is it possible to go around the tree, sort of make a just a little narrow space where the tree is, or without making it a full five feet? Or? I mean, 
Uh, it becomes tough to maintain, I would assume, and I don't know if it would just crack because of the tree as the roots grow or whatever, but yeah. we will have another meeting when we get to see designs, and right. so we can certainly, you know, so we're talking more about it. Yes. Uh, but from an ADA perspective, you can cut down to 36 inches for a, you know, short period, but. And it would be a short period. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's not much sidewalk there. Right. Yeah. So, you know, we can't go the whole distance. And Chris is saying we have, you know, if we have to slim it down, then we'll look at it. But they have, they've really just barely started. I mean, right. they did some borings and right. stuff, but certainly, um, you know, we'll do the other thing once we have a design then we'll all have something to look at and, yeah and if you're like me i like visual aids i want to know that's what i'm looking at so then we'll be able to have some input and see how people feel about it. obviously once we're outside of our right away i can't come and do anything to you or your tree or your lawn without you know your permission so we'll certainly work with you to make sure everybody's happy mm -hmm, absolutely um does this construction affect the entrance to the rec center no. The um, during construction, uh, all your driveways should you should remain yeah. you should have access during construction. Okay. Yeah. So in the in the you know kind of backup, I've been helping out on the first leg of this, but so you know the reason why we picked this section of road, and I mean, there's some of the obvious is that you know the curb is about this high, the sidewalks. <laughs> you know the kids um it's it's too small you know part of the wall is starting to fall in so there's a lot of pieces plus plus we want to connect two important parts of our town um which is the rec center and the school so um so that's why that project was chosen um and you know there's things over time the width of the sidewalk isn't you know realistic anymore it's it's potential safety issue mm -hmm. and the state of vermont is due to come back through that section and resurface the road last i knew around 2027 20, 20, 20, that was what we're thinking we're trying to so get we're trying out to get this stage. project before because <laughs> the last thing you want to do is have a nice paved road and then dig it up behind it and put sidewalk in and and that's what we did on church street remember when we redid the sidewalks in church street we literally did that the the, the year after we paved through there so yeah then we had new sidewalk and curb patch <laughs> yeah so we're trying to get out in front of it yeah um, we were lucky to secure the grant for that um a couple of oh should tell them about the stairs the new connection from the school oh yeah so that and, part of it so there was a few different projects that kind of go together but they're they're separate mm -hmm. um so the sidewalk project is one of the pieces to tie in um the wreck lyle uh, has her hand up what thank you james oh. <laughs> um so so there's there's obviously there's um we want to tie the wreck we want to tie recreational area and the school area into the town. Uh, and then we also have through the VOREC grant that we got, which was separate, but you know, we've tied the ball fields to the town. So the new, uh, if anybody had a chance that the, well, it used to be the old kids path that come up from the athletic field to the town is now have a nice stairwell and path that comes up on, on the side of the church here. Um, so we're just trying to connect the pieces of our town together. Um, a couple of the concerns that I had, uh, one, we had talked about potentially putting a ped pole in where the school crossing to the ball fields would be. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if that ended up, we ended up getting that into the estimate or not. I mean, it would be nice if we it have, was feasible. I think so. But... We talked about, yeah. yeah, Rita can answer. A quote from a vendor to include in the budget estimate. And I know it's challenging where the where the drive to the ball fields is and across the street where you tie that in is the challenge, right? Because mm -hmm. um, you either have to go down farther where there's no sidewalk or you have to come up farther where it's more yeah. challenged for the, and we, the pole. In we it. did talk about that because we <clears throat> estimated because I don't know what the rule is now, but it used to be 100 years ago that 
to go crosswalk to crosswalk, you needed sidewalk to sidewalk and truncated dome to truncated dome. So mm. we did, Reed and I did measure the opposite side of the road to see so that if we moved the crosswalks, um, I know some people would like a crosswalk at the rec area to the ball field driveway, but you know, you have to take into consideration site distances and stuff. So we do have money in the budget to investigate a couple things, but certainly making the school crosswalk from the school to the um, ball field side, you know, safer. So, and then the other piece of it that I'd be concerned on is I don't think, I don't think there's a good time to do the project. What, what yeah. I say that is <laughs> you either like, you either have the kids out of school in summer and you're trying to get it done while the kids are out of school, but at the same time during the summertime, you have walking traffic to the rec facility. So, or you have kids from the school program walking to the pool. So right. how, I guess the big concern for me would be how will we be addressing construction? Cause it's a bottleneck area. There's really no place else to walk. Um, so how will we safely be able to navigate through there while we're doing that? From what, and, and Chris can correct me from what I understand with the design plans, as well as um, when the contractor is selected, they need to generate a traffic control plan that needs to be reviewed and approved by VTRANS. So making sure during construction, if the sidewalk section is being constructed, that there is an alternative um, ADA compliant like detour route to go around the construction piece. And so that um, I think that piece will be very important during construction, especially being used um, with with the ongoing pedestrian traffic with the different um, rec fields and things like that. Um, it used to be if you closed a sidewalk, because I can't remember all the MUTCD standards, but if you closed a sidewalk, you had a detour, you may even have to have flaggers there to escort people. I remember having to do something like that at a project that we had and uh, at a prior project so but i'm not sure if there's another area to cut over to the rec area some kids may well i would assume during by behind giffords like there's a way to get to the pool isn't there through the back uh some people can go up geico <clears throat> and yeah. then there's a pathway down between private properties i see kids coming up and down there. Yeah. yeah so some well that's the i think that's the challenge is some kids will find their way in other like, ways. I'm, I'm sure we're gonna have the contractor say how they want to do it but i'm thinking kind of realistically is how do you actually do it because yeah. you're either going to have to go on private land um, which has obstacles we have walls and things like that or you have a very narrow road that's not even really street legal to begin with mm. that you have traffic going through so yeah i mean i could see that maybe at the end of each working shift that it's put back to a temporary fashion but what happens during the daytime when when you're actually ripping and roaring and you don't have a wide enough street to yeah. move it. You can't well, put them gonna, on people's land. I mean, they're going to be responsible. But we'll obviously have someone overseeing the construction. So they're going to have to be keeping an eye on it. And we'll have, you know. Well, I, I'm just saying, I'm a I contractor. Know. So I know how this works. <laughs> so it becomes, we haven't figured it out. You figure it out, right? And it's, I'm just trying to think like realistically, like where do you walk? Yeah. I mean, think of all the people that walk through there, right? Like where would you walk during the daytime if that is not open for you? I wish it could be depending on the traffic, you know, during the construction, maybe they have to do it like to one lane of alternating traffic yeah. in order to create an ADA mm -hmm. path along the road because going, you know, trying to create a detour path on people's property that's not flat is it's not going to be acceptable. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's something to look at is it maybe, you know, top flights, but it's certainly something that Rita and Chris will look at as, yeah. you know, as we get through the process, because they'll be out there and more familiar with the road. So we certainly don't want people wandering over your properties. Um, so, well, but it's a good point. We'll have to. Yeah, it's a, it's you know what it'll slow people down. We maybe that's it. Maybe we need stoplights right there, and that'll slow and people down. That, I mean, it's a, a yeah stage stage you have, and then the other half, just so you don't have long queues or as long as them. Because believe it or not, we you know there's quite a bit of foot traffic that comes through there. Yeah, that's true. And, it, and it's spread out all day, evening. I mean, depends on people walking and yeah. you know doing whatever they want to do. So and then there's yeah. the chickens in the grass. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Maybe they can do that. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that yeah, Lyle, the ducks in the so Lily has her hand up. Yeah. Um, Lily, you got your hand up. 
Mexican. This is your chance, Lily. You blowing it. Gotta up. unmute. <laughs> Did she log in? Did she? Sorry, it's Did so hard to unmute on the phone. I apologize. Yay. Can't um. Can't hear you, Lily. Hang on. Oh, um, thin work is magic. Okay. I know I'm unmuted from my end. Yep. Yeah, you can, can hear me? Yeah. Great. Um, just, I appreciate you talking about the crosswalk over to the rec fields. And I just wanted to have a public comment of support for that and how important I think it is that we take the opportunity of sidewalks to, if we can't do that, at least plan that with curb cuts and, and such that we are thinking about what that crosswalk will look like and how to make it safer across the street. Um, and then I just wanted to re- reinstate that it's not an ADA accessible path, but that there is the full connection in the trails from the school to the rec center in terms of students safely getting there during construction, that there are current real, not through private property, off-road off, off -road options for part of, part of it. That's all, thanks. Thank you. Can't see if there's anybody else. To I think it's just Jean Liley on, right? Anybody else on Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. All right. The section in front of what was Valley Motors that's now an empty lot, will that get a sidewalk added to it? Because there isn't a sidewalk currently there. I need to double check. I'm quite sure that that would be one that would get it through there. And then uh, because of the wide open driveway, I mean, it's you, you probably want to curb that and mm -hmm. kind of have the sidewalk ramp up. Basically, have two drives with an island in the middle. Right. Uh, I've watched. I'm sure we all have watched plenty of vehicles. You know, pull a U-turn in there, including semi cabs, because it's so big and open. You can, but then it's also because that's where the kids walk. Having it be clear and not something that you could just easily drive over now that it's a sidewalk. And so, yeah, exactly what you spoke to was kind of the concern going through my head was if we're going to add something that looks like a sidewalk, is it actually elevated or makes it so that a driver couldn't just or hopefully wouldn't just go over? <laughs> yeah, we'll have to talk to. Um, yeah. No auto GW about that because it is their parking lot because it would change their mm -hmm. they currently have a wider access so we would have to talk to them about that um, if they'd be willing to reduce the size of their curb cut because right now it's pretty wide open. There, there are guys more than it should be. Well, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, and we could speak to. Um, them about it um, and, and we're going to have to be careful about you know construction obviously we'll have to stay in our section just because that was a big I can't remember the name of the firm but a big brown field and so they've come in and torn down the building and capped it and I think it's one of those do not disturb so you know places I think so, it's all remediated though I don't know but I think but there's a cap on it and a cover yeah. I don't think they can I'm not sure what they can do there now I don't know I think it's good to go was it? I don't know. Because so. when they came, they were only making it into a parking lot. So, but we can, we can get a hold of the plant manager, Chris, when we get to that and talk to them. And and then right at the north end of the proposed sidewalk, right where Nolato and the um, exit way of the school is, there's a drainage structure that's sitting there currently that's in disrepair. Mm -hmm. Will that be part of this project or is that something that the town's got to look at doing prior or... It, it's like literally starts right there. I know where it is. I think that it's a big hole. I think that we that Morgan um and Richard maybe met with Nolato. I think that might be Nolato's okay. issue. It just be maybe something to either yeah do we'll before or maybe they could it. do it part of the project. As or... you see it, you can't miss it. So yeah, we can talk to them. But I'm pretty certain that's the one that Richard and that Richard Morgan that starts them. Right, it's there. Right it does. There. It's right yeah. there. Yep. Yeah. We looked at it during the better connections, like the walk on it. <laughs> That's all right, right Sherry. Mm -hmm. There you go. It isn't it's better than the beeping yeah. security system every few minutes. There is not. 
this is going to happen. I mean, when there's mm -hmm. eventual. Fortunately, this is a long run. I think we were, I think we were looking at 2025 as the projected construction. Oh, I, I think because so. we've got to get it done before the state pays, which I don't think we knew when we when we knew when we wrote it. So it's one of those grants that you get from the state of Vermont, the bike pad, and I believe it's a three to five year because you have to go through all the permitting, and some of the permitting is. You know, I don't know. Are we looking for salamanders, toads, arrowheads, the whole, you know, kitten and caboodle? Oh, okay, good. But and then the DEPA six months at a minimum, and then uh, the right away process. It's even if you're amenable to it, just the process of getting together, and signing. Uh, it takes time. So yeah, because the lawyer has to come and research your deed so that it's accurate and we put in a copy of the description of the work. But could you talk just a brief about NEPA? I am or, pretty or, I, yeah. What it stands <laughs> for or, that, but uh, or what it stands for. <laughs> but it well, it's the National Environmental Protection Act, and um parts of it are like the wetlands and historical archaeological. Um, we've already done those assessments, um, and, and those that information goes in with this whole packet of impacts um, to the to the state, and um, it's, it's it's. And then that takes about six months. It takes at least through. six months, mm -hmm. yeah, for the state to get through, and then once they issue a categorical exclusion, which is basically, yep, this project is not going to be a big impact to the state resources, then. Then Chris can start doing his job and 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 really start focusing on the design and the layout of the new crosswalks and the sidewalks and uh, look at the retaining wall piece. So yeah, so this is you know federal money is great and but it takes time you know to get through the paperwork to get it. So. So, so not even next summer. No, definitely not. That's probably not. not. We'll probably be doing design and easements and things like that would be my guess. And then obviously hoping to construct in 25 um, would be the hope. So, but again, you know, that's if the state gets through NEPA in six months and that, you know, we kind of have to, it's like hurry up, start, and then you wait and then you pick back up and go. So it's not a quick process, Marguerite, <laughs> but I'll be kept informed about our progress and obviously when you know when we're looking to do construction and things like that. Yeah. So. We'll keep we you in the loop. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep you in the loop. So are you creating some sort of chicken duck pedestrian Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, maybe they'll learn to stay home maybe the noise will scare them and they'll stay home actually they'll probably start heading down the over other side of the street they'll probably head towards town yeah yeah they'll head towards town now instead of property and then they'll stay that's there. right did you notice them when you were out there getting pictures there's these ducks and chicks that cross constantly they're out. how they're still alive is beyond me i have seen I people like, like screeching of tires as they, <laughs> they're they they're walking across but yeah so they're just i don't even know whose they are walk freely so mm, so it is kind of funny all right yeah the so retaining wall that's there in front of my house do you know when that was put in i'm just curious like what the life I don't think so. I don't think there's a number on that. There's a number on the wall, the big one down here. But no, I don't. I think that was wasn't that part of the reason too. We we drilled was to figure out how it was built. Did it come in like this? Did it stand straight? What was it? And I even so we don't know when. Or I don't know when it was constructed. We couldn't find any plans at the office for it. So checked with B Trans and they didn't have anything in their records either. Yeah, I don't know maybe there'll be something behind there like a little archive or something that we'll find something and they'll decide what right? and we'll know when it was yeah so i don't know do you know do you do you remember ever them doing any work to that marguerite no i don't either yeah i hadn't heard me 
old pictures in the historical society right. Right. Some pictures, so historical you know, society yeah, they will give you somewhere near yeah because we did we looked for i had them look for the big wall to, to i asked joanne marshall to look for that wall um the big you know with fish on it and she didn't found anything either so i don't know okay you bet Uh, so as I stated earlier, uh, the next steps would be to, to, to uh, go back, um, you know, <clears throat> internalize your comments, um, create a uh, purpose and need statement. Once that's approved, we will develop some alternatives and then we'll be back to uh, conduct an alternative presentation meeting. And then at that point, the select board will choose the direction we're going and we'll start the design process. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing. Aha, we're back. There's more people. Eris, well, sorry. What are you gonna do, huh? Uh -huh. I know, all of a sudden. <laughs> like the Brady Bunch. Now. Well, thank you so much, Rita. Thanks, Chris. It was nice to see you in person. Appreciate it. So Greg Martin is here. Okay. No, I'll just let them give, give them a second. Yeah. Out, cause I guess this is their call with yep, me. So. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, they're opening the door. I guess this is like a little bell. We know when they're coming and going. Yeah, it must be the ghost to be coming. Yeah, it must be. I don't know. I heard the work. No, no, it isn't. The ghost is coming when they want to. They're in a lot of different. All right, so we will move forward with our next appointment. Uh, so, uh, Greg, you're all set to go, even if we get you five minutes early? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Greg Martin, um, owner of Tessie Taverns, for anybody that doesn't know him, um, he's here just um, going over um, a request for um, a water EU reduction for his property. I think he should start. So, so typically on something like this, Greg, um, so we become like the, the board of water because we have so many different hats in this town. Um, so at this point, what we do is, is, um, you know, just state, state what the, um, what the issue is and then what you would like to see. So, um, what, you know, it kind of has to be, um, definitive, like, like what I'm seeking is X, Y, Z. Um, yep. and then, and then the board, um, the, the water commissioners will then make an, a, a ruling on that, um, and we'll get back to you with that ruling. So that's kind of how, how it works. So we take off our select board hat and we put on our water hat. Exactly. <laughs> so, so we'll let you, uh, just, just tell us briefly, um, you know, kind of what's going on and, and, um, what, what you're looking for, Greg. Uh, we're converting the tavern over to apartments, so um, it's on a standby rate. Of, I, I don't know what the rate is, but seven EUs, I believe. Um, and it's never going to be used for that again. So I want to switch it to an apartment rate and then a uh, reduction in payment until we get those apartments up and running, which we expect sometime in the spring. Because we won't be using any water for a long time. The apartment, Greg, are you making multiples or is the restaurant just, just going to be one? It's going to be one apartment. apartment. That's that's the plan. Um, hopefully, we'll, we're trying the equipment. We've been dealing with equipment liquidator and um, 
that probably that that should happen in the next month or so. They'll be getting some of the equipment if the price is right, and then hopefully, uh, as I get a contractor contractor together, we'll start uh, the renovation process. Just to clarify, I missed the answer on: is it one apartment or two apartments? One, one apartment. One. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Trying to keep as much character as we can. And and then just <clears throat> so it paints a broader um, picture here. So can you just take us through what the current property looks like? I mean, there's a bunch of us that kind of know what currently it looks like. Currently we and have... What, oh, and then sorry. what you're looking to do with it? Uh, currently we have seven apartments upstairs, um, which are rented, and the tavern down below on this on the first floor. Um, we're going to convert the first floor apartment, uh, first floor, the tavern itself into a uh, apartment. We get this beeping going. Yeah, on there's tonight. a beeping in the background. Um, can, so there's a <laughs> kitchen. So you have a commercial kitchen. You have a bar area. So all that will be all just one big apartment. So that'd be one big apartment. Nice. Okay. So you'll have that. You'll continue to have your seven apartments. Upstairs. Yes. Existing, yep. and then the downstairs will be one big. It'll be the eighth. It'll be the eighth apartment in the building, and that's it. Just eight apartments, and that will take I estimate six to seven months to complete, depending on contractors, which could push it up further. And you said you were liquidating your kitchen equipment in the next month or so, right? That's, that's the plan. I've been dealing with. Okay. Uh, I remember the name of the company. I can't think of it off the top of my head. I guess this question is more for you, Therese, that um, knowing the parameters that we've sort of worked in within the past, um, even though this isn't already an apartment, since the restaurant is gone, are we, like, as a board, can we make a decision that looks something like um, it's an apartment, but it's on vacancy rate, and then we give them a six month or whatever the time frame is. Like, how how does that work if it's not actually an apartment, but it's also not actually a restaurant? How do we, how can we or can't we address that? I guess is the question. You can or can, you can address it any way you want because what you but what you have done in the past when you had when um, Dylan was doing some work on Densmore right next door, you gave him a break for a quarter mm. so that he could for one quarter so that he could redo and it was an existing apartment he was just redoing the apartment i think you did that for him there mm. you did um i think when the um who was the people you rented the staples when they had their place on the market you gave them a break for one quarter i believe you did one um, for the merrills and you did one for the merrills when they were doing work so right so essentially like looking to the future when this apartment is online the the entire building becomes an eight eu right, right? and, and so right, we're yeah. looking at we're playing with one eu essentially that's right, what we're exactly. looking at the seven that are up and running stay the same and then we're just talking about this one right as a separate. currently okay. you have seven eu for the apartments which is all fine greg's in agreement with that and then there's 7.71 for the restaurant because restaurants are different you had a he had a 60 seat restaurant and then i believe that's 28 per gallons per day per mm -hmm. seat so that's why the 7.71. So what would happen is the 7.71 um, would drop to one and, and you could give him, you know, the one quarter reprieve. So while he's redoing the apartment and then bring it online as vacancy rate, which is 90% of the existing rate. And then once he has a tenant, you, you know, he could move it to um, actually... Yeah, he could move it up. Or I'm trying to remember the ordinance if you, I don't think you care if apartments are vacant or not. I think he would just move to one EU. I think he'd give him a break for, possibly give him a break for three months during construction. And then he would just make him one EU and it wouldn't be vacancy. Yeah. Vacancy rate for commercial, no, but you right. could give him, you've right. given people a break in the past for a full quarter while they do right. construction. Um, and certainly, mm. you know, it's it's a loss for the town um the budget the 7.71 it's a loss because there's not a restaurant but it's a gain because there's such a housing shortage mm -hmm. and you know it's it's beautiful in there so i'm sure it'd be a beautiful apartment 
it's for lack of a better word, this is a change of use. Uh, what, how, how, how do we do that? I think you just addressed it, but. Well, uh, change of use is a zoning term. Right. Um, so he's not changing anything. I mean, he could, yes, by rights, he'd need a zoning permit for a change of use, but it's, you know, it's a small permit, but that's the zoning process. So, um, so what, um, quarter wise for water, mm -hmm. our current one that we're in right now, when does that end or, well, or when it. did it just start? So or? it goes July, August, September. October, November, December. So, so we're coming so up we, to a new, we're coming up to a new, so July, August, September. And I don't know, Greg, have you, I didn't look, did you pay that bill yet? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. It was I, a I big bill. I'm sorry. So the yeah. quarter, <laughs> I didn't look at it. I'm sorry. The quarter that's coming up would be October through no, December. October through December would be the quarter coming up. Yes. Hey, just out of curiosity or just a statement, Greg, if you're, I don't know how you do with the other apartments, but I had heard a rumor that GW Nolato was looking for apartments because they were bringing, they were busing people at some point from Boston. And we have had another person in town who's actually contracted directly with a business and they, um, the business actually rents the apartment. So um, if you, you know, wanted to, if you were looking for a, a, you know, a tent, certainly reach out to GW, to Human Resources, they may enter an agreement with you where they actually rent it. And yeah. then, you know, if you're not that you'd be, and I'm sure you have a mm -hmm. list of people, but um, I have heard they were looking. Yeah, I, I, you know, that's good to know. Our leases are, current leases are full until July, but uh, yeah. again, as we get this one online, um, then we can talk to them. It's going to be a beautiful apartment. That's all I can tell you. Oh, no, most definitely. I've I've eaten there a few times, and it is beautiful. So it's nice. Yeah, you have to make a motion. A bait for he the, paid. The so there's for the, oh, next the upcoming quarter. Yes, because he did say. But I, I mean, I can, I think that's kind of what I was getting at. Is you know. Um, to be consistent with what we've done as a board, we have given individuals the opportunity to have a quarter period to um, to um, renovate um, mm -hmm. different areas in the town. So yeah. I think um, if Greg's okay with it, what I would be willing to do or make a motion for would be to, um, is for, the quarter of October through December is to um, suspend the 7.71 EU restaurant piece, which is the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, and then as of January 1st, then we would, we would set that to the one EU for the bottom. So you'd yep. have an eight total EU as of January 1st. Yep. So that would give him... I'd give him one quarter of reprieve for the bottom, which is roughly what? Well, it's currently, um, you know. Give him about $800 oh, reprieve least, or something like that. Yeah, is that sound least, right? I can't remember what his bill was he paid. It was about 800 yeah. for that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it would give him a chunk of reprieve because also he'd be going from seven to one. So, mm -hmm. and, I, and the only reason why I say it is it's, just trying yeah. to keep consistent with what we've done for others. Um, we've had a couple others in town that we've done similar. Mm -hmm. um, so that gives them time to. Um, gives them three months that yeah. he doesn't have to pay a water bill. And yeah. then because he's only on water, he's not on sewer. And then, um, you know, and then, of course, he's not looking at that Update. massive bill. <laughs> right. Then, then we'll switch eight. it to one. Then it'll switch to one. For the or eight total, I'm guessing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So then January, you would switch to the eight total. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So you'd have pay seven on your next bill, seven EUs just for the apartments, and then in, in your next bill after that, you'd go to eight. So huge, significant savings in your water bill. <laughs> it's vacant right now, so paying the eight hundred last last quarter was really hard. Yeah. With no revenue sure. coming in. 
Mm -hmm. It's tough because we're a closed system. So we, when we set the water rates, we base it on the EUs that we have at the time. So it, it's, sense. you know, it's one of those things that we have. That's why we have people come and talk to the select board and look at it because that's how the bill's based on. So, because we charge, you know, so much per mm -hmm. EU based on you know, you're a businessman, you know how it works. <laughs> I know it works. But yeah. So how do you feel about that? The three month reprieve, no bill for the downstairs while you do some construction and then going to one in January. I'm fine with that. Okay. I can move to approve. So motion. So so the we need to restate it. Well, no, my question is just what if um I guess Paul Valley is saying, you know, it's about revisit. So Do you care if there's a time frame as to when he gets the apartment open? Well, I, I mean, I think by then he's, he's on the the one EU starting in January and there so, would no be no vacancy anyway. Right. Okay. So I, I don't think it really, okay. we can't really play it any differently. No, I just want to make sure you're all set. Okay. Sorry. Let me interrupt you. Lindley. Uh, that's fine. I mean, I guess as of January 1st, if he has, you know, nothing going on in there or hasn't rented it he could always go to a well that's right we can't so it'd just be a one i mean worst yeah. case scenario he's at eight and he's yeah you know as um, a business you're taking the hit on one eu right right rather than but if he reopens a restaurant your bill's going back up we're not reopening a restaurant <laughs> not a reopening i wish i said all to inspect oh great okay so did you make a motion i'm sorry so i moved it yeah Lindley. Or, or Lindley moved the motion, so we just need a second. Do you second it? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Okay. All right. So if you have any questions, Greg, just send me an email. Otherwise, I'll make the change in the software tomorrow so that I don't okay. forget. But so that way you'll be ready to go. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks All for right. coming again. Have a good evening. You, you too. too. All right. Bye. <clears throat> All right. So got... okay. And we will <clears throat> quickly move on to public comment. So is there anything public comment wise that is not on the agenda that anybody wants to bring up? Now is the time to do it. Me. Oh. Yeah, I just want to make a comment about Ford Festival. Um, I want to congratulate the committee. They did a, a wonderful job. They had the 5K race. The band show was full. There was entertainment. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. So the entertainment, um, the Historical Society sold most of their books, from what I understand. Um, Kevin Barry with the ice cream and the EV car display. And uh, downtown seemed to be pretty busy all day long. The bar was open and uh, there was a lot going on downtown. So uh, congratulations to the Ford Festival Committee. It did a hell of a job. Uh, unfortunately, I did not win the duck race. Uh, but <laughs> next year, I'm going to get my duck in advance and do some training. So hopefully, it'll be a, a better result. But just congratulations to uh, everybody who contributed to the Ford Festival. Anything else, public comment? We don't have any in person, so it's just whoever's online. All right. It must be everybody's good. Seeing none, we will move forward. Are you waiting for anyone? No. Okay. She's she's a one woman. So we just I like it. You guys were um first on our agenda items for the night. So technically if you're if you're um last on the appointment but first on the agenda you're in the same slot. <laughs> so So your timing so, worked out. So you're in the same same uh, spot. So you know, with Teresa was yeah. trying to be seven. Early. Yeah. Yeah, you're good. So yeah, yeah. it's so just still in the same spot yeah when it's such a that, I, was like, I don't know what this means it's such a crapshoot because you don't know how long the public comment on the first part you do 45 minutes but it could have taken five you just or an hour you just don't know so it's all a gamble mm -hmm. sure
So I gave the, um, so, so, you know, what's in the packet was, um, I put in a copy, let's see, Owen had said equity inclusion committee. Uh, oh, see right there, like an appointment. Okay. I gotta learn to read to amend the declaration of inclusion. He'd attached a word document with the proposed amended language in red. Um, he said, Chris Jarvis pointed out to Leonard Meek that sexual orientation was accidentally omitted from the original declaration and the EIC noticed two other groups that should be included veterans and people who are not U.S. citizens. So his his version is to add sexual orientation, veteran status, and then he wrote citizenship. So I don't know if you have... Um, I don't really have anything else to add other than I'm here to answer any concerns you might have. Yo, what up? Um, to the camera. Um, uh, Lenny. Lenny's Lenny's waving, but I had a but just so whoever well we'll fix it. Veteran status is the apostrophe goes after veterans, but citizenship. You just say citizenship in general. So we're just covering whether you're a citizen or not a citizen. Okay. All right. Yeah, because you get into a slippery slope when you try to start having inclusive language around different statuses. I mean, yeah, that's my day job and I still can't figure out a way to do it. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, I think citizenship is appropriate and um, as long, you know, and silly me, I, I, I'm, I'm identified and I didn't even, I totally missed the veteran status myself. Yeah. So, I mean- Well, that's, it's hard to think- It's hard to you... think of all of it. It's kind of like, you got to start wearing it a little bit Mm -hmm. and then you you figure you, you learn a little bit more so yeah and it's hard too when you start changing it because you kind of want to say the town of Bethel condemns racism and welcomes all person and wants everyone to feel safe it's like you just kind of want to because I'm always thinking that there's somebody is there somebody else we're missing accidentally so the sentiment is there but again we'll keep wearing it and if something comes up um as long as we're all open to revisiting it to make sure you know we're always gonna grow and uh i think so should our documents right as we become more informed um so should our documents and uh, our statements so yeah i don't know if anyone has any other questions that's what i'm here for <laughs> And plus, just to say, hey, yeah, I'm having seen hey, you in a while. And don't worry, uh, Abbott Road, hopefully pretty soon, is going to get started. Everything inside of me not to open up oh, no. with a public comment it's about that, but I'm like, nope, they have enough going on. Oh, it's coming. No, we have a contractor, and and we made a deal with the with Royal Iraq to add three more culverts, and so awesome. we're headed there. Chris will be overseeing the work, but hopefully, I think that's Dylan. Hopefully, that starts in like I don't know, maybe a couple, couple three weeks. Yeah. So. You'll be good. My wife and I were just driving that home this evening, and we're like, it's fine now, but if we got to like slide through this in winter, that might be dicey. Yeah. That one partially. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, because the whole, all the contracts say they need to be done by November 17th. So I was, well, I meant to email you the other day, and it crossed my mind, and then I forgot. I appreciate it. I know you're all working on it. So thank you, though, for uh -huh. that unsolicited uh, so the, does any of the board members have any comments in regards to the proposed amended changes so we're not amended declaration of inclusion okay so 925 as written with the amendment of the veteran status citizenship sexual oriented yes we're gonna yeah. fix that i'll fix that when okay. i retype it yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sure. I'm going to second that. Okay. So, when the end of this? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Would it be possible on our inclusion statement uh, to ask our businesses if they could post it? I don't know. I mean, it's on our website. It's going to be in the town plan. It's in our town report. I think that might be more of a job for the Equity and Inclusion Committee. Yeah, there you go. To approach businesses and see okay. if they would post it. How do you feel about but, that, Christy? Yeah, well, I, I think it. Could, I don't think anybody should shy away from offering that suggestion if the opportunity arises. I mean, 
certainly I think it's a it's a very good idea, but I won't think I would hope the select board, if you have the opportunity that you would also suggest that to businesses in town as well, just like I would. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't is there all, I would think they'd be aware of it, but could email. We have an email list. We could email it to people and just let them know in case they're not aware. Yeah. Well, Who knows how well, how closely people follow us. <laughs> I like that Facebook post though, this time. It was out on uh, Facebook the, about the meeting. Oh. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. We put the agenda out on Facebook. On front, oh, well, we do it on Front Porch Forum all the time. I think Lenny has his hand up. But um, face, we do it. We're supposed to put the agenda on Front Porch Forum. And then what was on Facebook? Just the agenda? agenda. Oh, and, good. And oh. the link to if you wanted to join. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. She must have put it on. I didn't realize she put it on Facebook. So that's good. Oh, oh good. Really yeah. Because we do always put it on Front Porch Forum. So that's good. All right. I'll make a note here to email it to local businesses right. Lenny did you have something I you're you're muted if you're talking still muted yeah you had this problem last time you want to type something I can read it for you I can't hear you no dang he's all right <laughs> all right you're okay okay good mm -hmm. but so I'll email it to the local businesses Lenny Leonard. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. I don't know what's going on. And then, yeah. And then it's something you could talk about at the EIC. If um, it's something, I don't know, because they're always talking about outreach and, and plus he's got that $10,000 grant. Maybe he'll, because he used some of the businesses, obviously. SWB audio capture, not registered. Okay. You got Lindley, you know, Arnold block. And then, you know, so, but I'm so, sure yeah. I know, I'm pretty sure we have all the business emails, so I'll send it out, see what they want to do with it. Might but it want is going an updated town plan. We might want to see if we can uh, equity committee see if we can get a an attractive uh, printing of it that uh, is designed to be posted in you know businesses. Uh, uh, but that that's a step down the road but i would i would encourage that i'm sure they've got lots of talented people on the equity inclusion that could doctor it up and make it look fancy <laughs> all right thanks Christy. Yeah, have a good night thanks yeah. for coming oh are you gonna stay um for not very long okay <laughs> we're, we're like i mean it's quite a party here tonight yeah. <laughs> going through it yeah. you actually just party early. was that the folks yeah, yeah. We're still partying. yeah. <laughs> they were talking about the sidewalk uh they were here for the sidewalk project local concerns yeah. meeting so right that was yeah. most people we've had in a long time yeah. <laughs> nice. hmm. that's right all right, we'll move forward. Um, next item we had was. Oh, Lenny, there is more power and recognition. Whoops, shoot, just went away. There's more power and recognition when both the EIC and the select board promotes the declaration of inclusion. So he's right. <laughs> SWB <laughs> audio captures not registered. Very quiet. Yeah. <laughs> Last. All right. All right. Um, so next we had on, on the list of agenda items, we had um, we'd gone through a series of some discussions and motions to adopt some policies in and around um, the constable. Um, so the body camera statewide policy, which the other one that we adopted was the yeah. use Force? No, we haven't no. done use of force. No, we sorry. did. What was that one? Tasers. Yeah. So tasers. Yeah, it was tasers. tasers. So we've done that. So this one's there. So, the next one is use of force. Yeah. So uh, for the most part, they're they're the same policies that have been adopted by Vermont State Police and yeah, the Vermont the Vermont Criminal Justice Training Council. 
that works close with Vermont State Police. So it's just and kind they, of yeah. more having our our eyes dotted and T's crossed for um, right liability issues that you know could come as yep you know uh, it, something like you know exactly and and they draft them to adhere to state statute so there's not a lot of wiggle room in, or any wiggle room right. in these they they hand them down the vermont criminal justice training council works with you know the state of vermont and then they put them into a policy and their whole vermont criminal justice training council board passes them and then mm. everybody you know in the state has you know it's the same one right so the next one is i think the next one is use of force okay i feel like i should know the answer to this question but it came up in my brain and i didn't have an answer we have two constables. They both work for other law enforcement agencies, and I imagine that probably they both have body cameras through those. But does Bethel actually own or, you know, like if we had a constable who was not, we do. Okay. Yes. And do we ask that our SWB officer... audio captured, not registered? Yeah, I saw. So the, um, so sorry. So yeah, so they, I believe that Bethel owns the one that oscar wears i'm not and i'm not sure actually maybe we own two so women and, on duty for us then. yes our equipment yep okay. and okay. they yeah and lenny's question was who governs when they wear them but this policy governs when they wear them it tells them specifically and, and since they all act under the same policies they're all aware there's certain times you can't turn them on um within as it's outlined in the policy and then there's other times you know they mandate it and um obviously if there's an incident then you can you know i can look at the footage if someone came in and said um they had an issue on such and such a date then i would reach out to them and you do kind of internal investigation and and you can watch the i can see the footage and you know and see what happens when we had a manage the police department before i came that's the way it was i would go to the chief and say okay this incident was reported to me if it was one of his officers he'd look at it if it was him he'd send it to me and I'd look at it and, um, and go from there. So, so essentially is when this is referring to a supervisor, you, you're the supervisor. Yes. Chris came in the other day and I was flipping through the handbook. Had to uh, remind her that it's her. Like, yeah. And I was really <laughs> hoping that because he was appointed that nope. he would directly report to the select work, but he does not. He, so, um, I end up managing that, but, um, so that's fine. And then I think I answered Lenny's question. Yes. Who governs when the cover cameras are active? It's the policy that governs. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, there's pages of it in the packet. And um which just make you feel like all the worst things are gonna happen. Like reading through it, it was like all my brain can do well, like you worst know, case. Scenario. Having been in a position where SWB audio captured, not registered. Something bad has happened. Um it's it's nice to have the video. It's also has proven it in the times, the multiple times I have looked at video, uh, the majority of the time was traffic stops. And uh, someone would come in and have complained the officer was rude or et cetera, et cetera. And I, I never had an instance in a single one that I watched. I'm not sure if the person who was pulled over was anxious or was just, and their recollection was not, what was right there, you know, on video, but, but, um, and then it's stored, you know, offsite in the cloud and this and that. And of course they have to have it too, for to present cases to the state's attorney's office. So I think it's an invaluable tool, not only for the officer, but for the person involved, you know, then, and it's well-documented and it's, I think that it could put somebody in a position where this way, a person in a position of power there is video, so you can say, hey, no, that person in power was wrong, and here's the video to prove it. So I think it's a handy tool. So it even works out really well. Like, I know Teresa and I went through it, like, a couple of years ago in regards to a, a ticket that was issued. Um, mm -hmm. And had we not had the body cam footage, like, you know, the way the person had had uh, had gone to the town and said that their interactions with with the officer that day and you know and they didn't do this and you know yeah and then when you when you looked at the body cam footage it was like night and day of mm. like how the person had described it has his hand. it was completely yeah. night yeah. and day and then we're like 
and the person's like, yeah, we'll just pay the ticket, you know? Yeah. So it was like yeah. a, a good tool to have to actually capture, you know, mm-hmm. what was really going on. Yeah. And I think for both sides too. Yeah. Gene. Uh, you know, I have a con. well, it's, it's a concern about. SWB audio capture our, not uh, registered. Our town manager is not on board 24, seven, 365. Uh, if there are incidents that happen at all times of day and night, uh, and some of those actually require the surrender of the the camera and the uh, a weapon if if that was used, uh, and I'm wondering to whom uh, that those in those really serious issues who does that it would go to the vermont state police that's who you bring in when you have a shoot when you have an incident let's um i I have been through a police involved shooting before and what happens is you bring the state police in immediately because you need an outside agency to investigate what happened and make sure that all parties are investigated your officer your policies Mm -hmm. as well as you know the the uh the victim or the perpetrator or whoever the role happens Mm -hmm. to be so you immediately bring in the vermont state police to manage it because you do not want it to be tainted on a local level um by anyone and and we had that happen and we had a chief of police but he immediately um, it was relinquished to the VSP because it, you know, you don't, you can't investigate your own. Right. Well, that was just to... part of, part of my question since we yeah. have. Uh, yeah. No, you, that's what you do. The word right. There is even the superior. So it's not even directly stating yeah. you know, which superior it's. Right, a superior officer. Or... Yeah, and and while SWB I may not be in battle twenty four seven, I'm not certainly registered. on call twenty four seven. So if something happened, I know Oscar would call me or the VSP would call me, and and um, but yeah, it's it's you you do not touch it. Right. Any well, also I, any I, complaints I, about an officer would go to you know can go to the Vermont Criminal Justice Training Council, and they can investigate. So if, say, I had a complaint that I felt was beyond my purview to look into, I would call the VSP and see if they had the manpower to do it. And if not, I would divert it to the Vermont Criminal Justice Training Council. So that way. My my only concern, you know, the concern is it is evidence. And so the trail of evidence and keeping that uh, secure Mm-hmm. Um, is yep. is critically important. Yeah, absolutely, okay. absolutely. All right. Any other questions in regards to the proposed um, policy? Do you want to do those together, Chris, or do you want to do them one at a time? That's just do one what? of them. Do what one at a time? Only, only thing we're just doing is just the body cam one. Oh, well, I thought the packet had the other one. No, it's just an Appendix A because uh, okay. the policy right. yeah, okay. referenced Appendix A of the other one, so I put it in there so you weren't looking for it. Got it. Okay. Leonard is asking, is there an option for automatic SWB turn SWB audio capture, not registered. I, oh, I got it. Hang on. I forget what the problem is here. I don't know um, if there's an automatic turn on. Lenny. I know I've talked to, I know that they can turn it on and off with a button. So I don't know if when they, I'm assuming it's habit that they just obviously keep it on. But I don't know. I can't answer your question because I don't know the maker model of the how it works so sorry i don't know if you really want to know send me an email and i'll find out and get back to you 
I just have to ask Oscar. If it were, I imagine that would be mentioned in the policy about disabling or something like that. But that's not that's not in the policy. So yeah, I guess and it's I don't, turn it on, turn it off. Yeah, and I don't know how they, you know, I just know because there's a little button right there where they do it. So. What? Well, yeah, I mean. Okay. Yeah. Number D, it's in there. <clears throat> well, it doesn't say the right one D. Both video. I, I okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Let's turn it on and off. Okay. So, okay, so page things. two of the policy talks about when they have to turn it on, Lenny, and it's in the packet. It's in on the packet, side. and when they have to turn it on, if it's a um, yeah. domestic assault or sexual violence or HIPAA violation, they can sometimes have the video, but they have to shut the. They can have the audio, but the video has to be yeah. shut off. And I think too that they shut up at certain times or when yeah. they go certain places. So yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of do's and don'ts in these eight, eight pages. Yes. And I had Oscar review them all before, you know, and um mm -hmm. so it was all he's like, it's all standard. Everybody's got the same. Yeah. Okay. I'll move its adoption if you need a motion. Sure. Second. Motion on the table. Second by Lindley. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Please have it. Thank you. Hmm. We have an appointment to the Planning Commission. Russell Roloff, he has been, he's attended a couple meetings, our, our bylaw final public meeting. He attended the other meeting the other night. He's retired. He's worked out of Bethel for, you know, his, pretty much his whole career. And, um, and he has, does, he has like state permitting experience. And as soon as we saw his letter of interest, we were like, come to us, please. And then he came to town meeting um, and talked to Eric Webb and Dana Kolovec and Zoe when they were doing yeah, and he was very interested. Um, and you guys he, didn't scare him away then. We did not. We were glomming on to him. <laughs> and uh, so he came to the first planning commission meeting. We just started on the 21st to start the town plan. Mm -hmm. And so I think he, he's going to be a great addition because so does, of his background. What does the planning commission look like now? Currently, it is um, Dana Kolovec, mm -hmm. Zoe Cartwright. Yep, that's right. Russell Roloff, mm -hmm. Eric Webb, Adam Sapern, maybe. I don't know. He tuned in and instantly shut off the other night, so I'm not sure what his status is. Myself and Rick Benson. Mm -hmm. And Rick Benson and I want to, we both will be done and hopefully in December. We want so to get. If you're both done, that leaves four or five? That leaves Zoe. Five if Adam is doing Yeah, it. Zoe, Dana, Eric, Russell. Because Denise was on, but she got elected to be a select board member. So now she's an ex officio when she comes. I think that's it. Zoe, Dana. And yeah, and they had, they were on the lookout for someone else. And yeah, they, did have somebody they had an eye, but they had an eye. Oh, well, maybe Paul Valley. We've been trying to get our hooks oh, into yeah. him. But um, we were trying to get our hooks into Paul Valley, but, and he's been slippery. So, but we were talking about, um, you know, just trying to get other people to join. We have a pro, I mean, this is the same committee where we mailed out over a hundred individual invitations and nobody joined. We've, mm -hmm. I've spoken to all the major landowners and I'm like, why would you of all people not want your interest right. represented? Sure. But no. So um, we're working, we just started with two rivers. We have a contract with them for, I think about $5,000 to do, help us with the town plan document, make sure that they update the, zoning uh no not census data uh there's some things we wanted to change during zoning bylaws like going from four acre lot to a two acre but we couldn't because of the wording in the town plan mm -hmm. so there's some of that that we need to change and um i just gave chris jarvis the updated school section um so that that can be updated um there is um oh christy there is money not in the five thousand dollars but two rivers received some amount of money and so that if we want to do some equity and inclusion work or chapter in there or, or 
you know, to be more inclusive. We know we want to include the Declaration of Inclusion, that they will do that for free um, because they have grant money for that. So that's also nice. So we can address that. Um, we've also worked with the health department and things before. So, so okay. it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. Um, but we're not looking for a big rewrite. We're looking for an update because we rewrote it in 2020. And you have to re do it every five years. I think you have to be done by eight. But we, I think it's they go over every five. But we want to have be on the right end of the census data this time. We always finish it just before it comes out. Okay, it's a new one. Yes, dang it. So, um, but yeah, so if you are interested in joining the planning commission, we'd love to have you. <laughs> Christy's like, we get it. But um, tell your friends. <laughs> so I just, before we forget, just need a motion to appoint Russell. Yep, three-year term. So okay, Denise. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. All right. I'll let you have one. I would be proud of you. I wasn't here the meeting at 738. Yeah, goals. <laughs> this is like, how Dave's that? not here. Somewhere <laughs> Mo has a smile on his face. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right. And update on the July flood. Still, so, as I was saying to Christy Abbott, so we're looking to see that um, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, well, we'll see. So Woodland will wrap up in the next probably the end of this, this week. week. And then West Quadrant, which is Lilliesville, Whittier, Brink, Dart, Ringe there. That's happening now. We probably Brink get is, another week. Brink is finished today. Another week, week and a half on the West Quadrant. Yeah, probably. Yeah, Brink is done. They finished mm -hmm. Brink today. And then so. that contractor will move directly to Cleveland, Cleveland. Brook Road. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll be done. And then a separate contractor will be doing Abbott and Old Route 12. Um, and then another contractor will be doing... Well, same, yeah. Well, Sandhill, Hill, Peavine. Sand Hill, Peavine. And then um, it's on the other side. Fish Hill. Fish Hill. You don't think about Fish Hill because you access it through Randolph. Um, so they will be done. So the contracts all state November 17th. And I think as people hit it, we'll be going. Um, we will be doing a massive project on Camp Brook Road. Um, that's being worked out now with uh, Du Bois and King, the state. I just signed two permits today for um, a and 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 um, oh, Army Corps of Engineers. So that big culvert... Um, that federal highways is going to replace will be out and out to bid etc and then our culvert that federal highways is not going to cover um still working with the state on that we may actually end up just going in with a slightly smaller culvert and putting it into there and then cementing it in place just as a i mean i say temporary measure but it'll buy us a few years a because decade. that is a Yes, because right. that's between six to eight hundred thousand dollars. There's another culvert that Morgan noticed today above the Marshalls, but it's an 18 inch culvert. Um, and I still have another 18 inch in the, the bottom that Federal Highway requested a hydraulic study on the state couldn't do. So Du Bois and King's doing it. So so I think the big culvert will be one contractor and then the two 18 inchers and a little bit of bank and bar and bank armoring will be another you know contractor and i'm still waiting for some technical assistance from the state on the other culvert because that's just beyond scope of what myself or the road foreman's going to answer you know to so when we have handed off all the data boring detail borings not boring <laughs> details but boring in the ground details to the state so Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So the so they did bore one side of it. So they'll be um so all that has gone to the state as well. So I'm looking for the bridge engineer of the state and state project manager to work it out. It has to happen before snow flies. So it's going to have late. to be soon. Okay. It has to. To answer, I can reach out separately, but with Abbott in particular, it's just a tough road with not a lot of space for ditching and such. I'm just wondering if that, do you have any ideas what they're actually going to do there? 
I actually don't right now because I don't have the document in front of me. But if you send me an email, I can give you the detail of the bid um, because I know it has multiple culvert replacement on that road. There's, I want to say there's six. There's three that we're adding new. And I feel like there was two or three in the bid itself. But okay. regarding uh, road damage or ditching, I can't, I can't recall. There's just too much of it. But if you send me an email, I'll tell you. Yeah, that's why that's why I, I prefer yeah, yeah. Okay. so as far as road work goes so we're you know getting there all the we're still waiting on north road um for two structures to be delivered i um, was really hoping that was going to get wrapped up this week if not hopefully by the end of next week that'll be wrapped up because we're going to install two new culverts and all that so last time i talked to dan he'd um mccullough he's the one doing that He'd been in contact with the state of Vermont because we're going to connect into a state structure. So he's been dealing closely with Ryan Slack. And so that's going to be more of a long-term fix that we talked about. Um, so I think that'll be, it makes sense. We've just had too many problems there to not, you know, FEMA likes you to replace it as is, but at this mm -hmm. point, and the other good news I found out was the faster we're done and the more hundred percent I can enter on the spreadsheet that are done, even 75 80 90 percent done um they won't even they don't even come and look at it so there's we could have if we get our work done we may not have any site inspections so any word on the bridge by mary floyd's i wouldn't know because it's a state yeah well we were wondering if they were gonna i don't know what do they're gonna but do. i know dubois like i sent you that message <laughs> yeah. dubois and king was out there yeah. Paying it and staking it. Yeah. Coincidentally, at the same time that Mary was talking about all the dirt. Yeah. And well, the boat landing on the other side. In the well, we had been, um, well, that wasn't a coincidence because we had, she'd been in contact with me. She came here. I sent it to Chris Bump and then he forwarded it on. So I do know. So he was well aware of that. I sent him all the pictures and just, as I told her I would the next day. So mm -hmm. what they're up to, I don't know. But I did talk to him about the culvert at Bidlax. Um, because while that's technically Randolph's road district, it's not Ryan Slack at Bethel, it's still Chris Bump. So I did tell him, I, he said, I said, water go over the road. I said, oh yeah, it did. And we dug it out. And then I told him that it jeopardizes the trailer park, the fire department and the shelter. So um, I need to send him an email. Cause he said, if you don't hear back from me in a few days, remind me. So I'll do that tomorrow too. Cause he, he was going to send, um, uh, talk to one of the state, you know, engineers. He said it's a difficult area. And I do know that the um, VAST had received money to do work on some class four roads. And one of them is Davis Road. And so we were just issuing him a permit to work on a class four road. So um, I know there's been some concern that the landowner has done a bunch of logging. So whether or not that's created additional runoff, I, I don't really know. Um, everybody speculates. So mm. anyway, so that is, so Chris was aware of that bump. So hopefully we'll have that meeting because um, the Tim Altrigetti, the trailer park, he's requested it. And we have, and I don't people. think that's true because we had issues up there before the landowner logged. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I wasn't sure about the quantity or just Irene it. It went right in the same spot. Yeah. yeah. And he didn't own it at that point. Yeah. So he's willing to take a look at that, especially to he's he knows now he's up the road dealing with stuff under Mary. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I'd heard a rumor that somebody else was awarded somebody was awarded that contract doing some work for us, but mm -hmm. you know, probably just a rumor. Probably. Yeah, so I, yeah, I, I would think by Thanksgiving we'll have everything wrapped up yeah because we're at um, november 17th is the last day of the con and then our smaller projects in around town you know probably the end of october mm -hmm. uh, i mean and, and they're starting to go fast i mean we just barely quite the process and you know woodland we've been working on woodland for three weeks and we just started the west quadrant late last week and we already got you know almost half of that done so mm -hmm. most of these projects are like two week jobs once you so get they're them, they're gonna there. go. They're gonna go quick. Once, yeah. Once you get so, them, yeah. I'm thinking probably the end of October would be a pretty good spot. And then there's still stuff the town needs to do. We'll need to go back, do final grading, add material, you know. So to the spots that aren't, you know, beautiful. Right now, the road crew has been working on Finley Bridge Road ourselves. So we have our own projects to do. We're gonna do the 
culvert replacement on Purim. Um, so we're, you know, we're also doing our own, some of the smaller force account projects as well. Where it's always the same issue. Are you talking about on down, right down near Tessie's Tavern? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah okay, yeah. Bottom, yeah. Where the temporary stuff was put in, that's getting pretty rough again. Oh yeah, and we had what was, you know, interesting there was that we also found a structure. You don't want to find a structure; you want to know where they all are. So we found a structure, and then we had everything pumped out, and we're going to have it pumped out again, and then. Um, and then we're going to install two new structures as you come down, because that's a lot of water to go a long way. We're also going up from 18 inch to 24 inch pipe, just like we just got to do this, bite the bullet and do it right. And um, so because it just seems like it, we just can't keep patching it. These events aren't going to get smaller. Exactly. You yeah. know, so Bummer. yeah, I <laughs> that though, you know, because that, that's really dangerous down through there. It, it is. Yeah. Yeah. For a lot of reasons so, yeah, yeah no it is I, I agree so um so hopefully so we have had a couple hydraulic studies so there are some culverts in town that are being upsized so you just you know you can't keep doing what is that is not the definition of insanity do the same thing over again <laughs> expecting different results you know we got to stop that <laughs> and, so, and again i will say that hmm. you know having been a part of the spring flood a couple of years ago and most of what I've seen is the areas that we have improved weren't damaged or or sustained little damage. They held up, around. yeah. Um, there are a couple of areas that are just repeat offenders. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a couple of them, but I would say overall, you know, even like, uh, you know, one example is like if you go up Ringe, anybody goes up Ringe, you know, we had stone line ditch like the upper half of Ringe um, in 19. And that all held up really well. Mm -hmm. And it was just the only stuff that we didn't do on the bottom that blew out. Mm -hmm. So Campbell uh, held up really well. Yeah. So we I think there's a lot of like online. positives out there. Um, and I, and I do think that one thing, and we'll continue to work on that is, you know, some of our success this time around was from Irene and the 19 flood of our own citizens recognizing that there's an event and getting out there and cleaning debris out of their culverts because like I was talking about today in the offices, mm -hmm. a majority of the stormwater damage comes from private landowners. So that water comes off their property onto the town structures. Mm -hmm. So the better that we can collect that debris, because most of that debris comes off of the private landowners, the mm -hmm. best that we can collect that debris before it hits our structures, the bridges and the small culverts and stuff, the better off we'll be. And I think I think some people in town have kind of got an eye for it now. Like when we had that bad event, they they kind of mobilize their own stuff and they're ready to unplug that one or two culverts that's near their house. And maybe the better that we do that as a community, we'll, we'll mm -hmm. continue to um, see yeah. some positives going forward with that. So because, yeah. you know, just just learning, you know, you know, Alex Reister had spent a lot of time up on on uh, Camp Brook Road, uh, keeping some select culverts that he knew were issues before. Um, you know, it's the culvert that we were just talking about, that's the state's culvert, but mm -hmm. you know, the, the one um, just on Pleasant Street, um, which was the one that, you know, basically sunk the trailer park last time because it just was overwhelmed and then all the water just decided to go out behind the fire station around and, and yeah. really wreaked a lot of havoc because not only did it go through the trailer park, but then it crossed the road again over to the other houses. Um, and we were able to, you know, Paul, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, once that water started coming this time, we were able to correct it within an hour or two and it receded back. So yes, yes. Yeah. Going in there and digging it out made a big difference because the two smaller ones, um, I'm just up line from that, the one at the fire station and then the one closer to my house. You know, they're just they're just not meant to handle that that big an overflow of of water. So yeah, Derek got in there and and took care of business, and uh, that saved it. Mm -hmm. and, and I think yeah. you know we're going to continue to educate ourselves on on these things. And you know, Therese had already had you know a handful of contractors mobilized in certain parts of the town, so they were already kind of looking at some of the problem areas that are historically you know. The repeat offenders and they were there to respond quickly 
I think some of the things, you know, I was thinking about it as you're talking is last year in our, maybe it's something to bring up a town meeting is we, I think I know for a fact, I wrote this and went like the select board town manager, whatever report sometime. And I remember this distinctly in 2019, people who have longer driveways, you know, it's their responsibility to crown it and ditch their own driveway. Because I know for a fact, I remember specifically a place on Lilliesville, someone lived up and all their stuff slid off plugged our culvert so it then it just tore out the road it just blew out the road yeah. and it was like you know my culvert wasn't plugged until your stuff came down your driveway and then you plugged my culvert and you just blew out the entire road i mean a chunk of road and um mm. we did address that but maybe it's a matter of bringing it up and talking about it at town meeting and you know if you have a driveway culvert it's your responsibility to keep it open if you have a driveway that goes up that enters mm -hmm. your you're you need to crown this so it sheets off but we have had several people who said they have springs and other things behind their house so those start you know and then all this water as chris is coming off there so we've said ditch your own property out back you know put in a ditch and try to so a you're not filling your basement but maybe we can divert it if it could go a little further out into the woods or the grass it wouldn't eat out the roads huh yeah <laughs> managing storm yeah, managing exactly. storm water yeah and we have contractor come out and educate us i think that's part of it if you've yeah. never lived on property that pitches like that or has those springs or you're on top of a mountain and you have the mountain fall and run off like those are variables you can't if you're not if you don't grow up with that you don't yeah. anticipate that so i think that could be a really good help yeah mind. maybe we'll do a little more of that in town report this year just talking about you know what your responsibility is talk to a contractor or you know there's there's ways to deal with it on your own property and then there's you know less road damage and you know that also impacts your neighbor because your stuff comes down plugs a culvert and now all of a sudden you've possibly flooded your neighbor below you and you know torn out their road or whatever and but. i think we still can do a little more now that we are more educated on you know, we always know that we, we divide everything up into quadrants. Yeah. You, the, yes, we you know, you have the Gilead portion. Yeah. You know, we know where those areas yeah. are. And then we have the West Quadrant, which is out in like Lilliesville area and Whittier yeah. and those places. And, you know, and then you get the Christian Hill segment. And, yeah. and we kind of know where those kind of areas are now. And I think maybe we can start to add some documentation to our like emergency preparedness type mm -hmm. guides of, yeah. You know, like Teresa did a good job this time, but what if Teresa isn't here, right? Like, yeah. what do we do then? So, <laughs> but it was kind of nice that yeah. we were heading towards the point of almost being like, okay, here are our go-to people. Mm -hmm. So if we get one of these storms, which we get one of these storms about every four and a half years now, right? Yeah. So if we get one of these storms that we know is coming, yeah. then we can activate these individuals to watch these segments of road right yeah. so if you have somebody that has volunteered or two people that's volunteered for the Lilliesville area then they throughout the storm they're kind of looking at these problem areas and when they arise typically these would be people with equipment because <laughs> it helps but yeah. you know then they can do things right mm -hmm. and the same thing with you know we did some of that this time around did, but, yeah. but you know that was based upon Therese acting ahead of time but yeah. you know if Therese isn't here or the select board's not here yeah. Who does that? Yeah. It'd be nice to have that game plan, like, yeah, just to let you know, okay, is, you have yeah. to call so and so. They're in Gilead. In They're going to look at this. Plan, in yeah, in your emergency plan, we have, you know, the contractors, and it was, you know, we talked. I talked to Morgan, and of course, you know, so we called the usuals. We also found out who has equipment. Yeah. So then we're like, so who who has equipment around? So we actually located a logger, and and then, um, so we're like, do we have any other loggers? Because loggers can build water bars and they can build roads so who's got a skitter who's got a bulldozer so we were rack you know figuring out who's where you know like i know you know wb's on gilead he'll take care of it you know so you have some people stationed and then mm -hmm. and and we were we were lucky this time that we actually had um you know in this case we had at least one other party in town so we were able to be like oh and perfectly they were in a tougher section because my concern going into it is okay if this is irene because they're telling us in the background that this is what you're looking at is okay so where do we have people so we can get in or who's out that can start building their way in who can bring you know so you're doing that and and we bought material ahead of time we are 
right after, I guess we started, we already had material. We started trucking. We got more material after as soon as we could, because, you know, Chris was like, Hey, Therese, you know, there's going to be a big demand. I'm like, yep. So we started calling, we had people hauling in, but you know, it's, and then it's a rush for everybody's fighting over the same contractors and the same materials. But I mean, there's still towns that haven't even gotten to the, well, there's towns that are just sitting there like, okay, we kind of know what we need to do, but they haven't even started the process to, to, you know, bid mm-hmm. stuff or, you know, yeah. um, and we've shared certainly all, you know, bid documents, all sorts of stuff. I was out doing road mm-hmm. inspections with a gentleman, Mike Blakesy from the state of Vermont. And then he's, Hey, Dries, can you come talk to the so-and-so from another town? I'm like, yeah, sure. Just email me and I'll send you the spreadsheet and, you know, call me. if it was a weird, You know, everybody, what I like is everybody tries to share resources and, you know, and helpful. So in this time, 2019, we were lucky because we were one of the few hammered. So the state didn't have a lot of projects. So they had a lot of assistance to give us. But in this time around, they were hammered. So, you know, I mean, they've been great, but certainly had their own hands full. But it takes a and all these storms are different. I mean, you mm-hmm. look at the Irene storm versus the nineteen storm versus this most recent one, and they all hit the town differently. Yeah. Different segments of the town were hit or not hit. <clears throat> so you never know where these storms, you know, just because it's coming to Bethel, you know, one side of town, you know, doesn't even take the effect of the other than light light stuff, you know, and then one town. You know, like we get the storm, what the, the three, Friday it, right before it that it was dry on Camp just, Brook. <laughs> just hit the blue out know, Cleveland. Cleveland Brook and, and North Gone. Road, like you know, and that really nowhere else really got Camp hit. Brook didn't get any rain, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> yeah, that way, yeah, it under was the new under the underpass there, what yeah. they're working on that was closed because it was like five feet of water for a while, so yeah. they could, had a unblock it from there to the river yeah because so i had someone close. on camp brook and they're like what are you talking it didn't even rain up here i'm yeah. like no it was just so it's odd you know mm-hmm. and then in that instance when we did lose cleveland brook i was getting calls you lost a bridge i'm like no i didn't there's not a bridge right there i did not lose a bridge what ended up happening was a huge rock dislodged plugged the state's culvert like a cork Mm-hmm. And I was talking to Chris Bum, but he's like, we can't plan for that. He's like, this, you know, this is it. So that's what happened. I'm like, you know, because I had multiple people saying, oh, you have a bridge in the state's culvert. I said, I do not. And uh, so, and and I did. <laughs> they had a big rock in it. <laughs> so, De- but, definitely so it one thing. Snowballs. <laughs> you know, and, and definitely one thing that we did see more of this time around, which, again, this storm was here longer so there was more time to act inside the storm because it was more of a rainstorm than it was a hurricane um you know the hurricanes kind of you know they come into an area of like 12 hours or less than 12 hours and they dump everything right so ours was kind of more prolonged so we had more time but but we also saw at least in my opinion saw more individual citizens out there helping absolutely um because again we can't just assume that the road crew which is only three man band mm-hmm. and the fire department is going to be able to do and the they're able to do a lot the thing is as soon as especially our fire department being swift water rescue as soon as they get a call out which in a flood situation they're gonna get a call out because they're swift water rescue they lose half the department like instantly is mm-hmm. gone right and so you know where they're trying to help pump out houses or or um or rescue people rescue people or keep roads closed or whatever like that yeah. you know the more citizen involvement that we can have yeah. um the better and i do think that's a misunderstanding of sometimes of people there how come you didn't have people out when you have three people and it's flooding and lindley can attest we had i had i was in the office at 5 a.m and we had spreadsheets and people are calling and mm. so our role is to at that point is it's totally safety related so the road crew at the at time the only thing they're doing is closing roads putting up cones yeah. making sure people aren't injured and you're just you don't have time to put anybody any of them in a piece of equipment yeah. you know to keep going and you kind of i was messaging with um ryan slack from the state of vermont and he said you know trees at some point you just stop let it rain and you'll deal with the aftermath and i'm like mm-hmm. you know okay 
and uh, and that's kind of what happens but you were but you know it's really safety of people and we had a lot of looky loos people going out after i was like oh, oh yeah you know we had evacuated evacuated two sections of town um and then people going over roads and because we were so saturated already a road that's this wide you know i remember going out and we lost like a good six eight inches of road in the day and i'm like finally putting a message out on front porch forum facebook saying if you don't live on it don't drive on it you know i mean mm -hmm. you know because we had 15 or 16 people stranded at the end of the day monday by tuesday we regrouped tuesday morning we got everybody out um and then you know and in well in perm we had to build something to get them out mm -hmm. and so you know we were we were lucky we have an yeah. excellent fire department and everybody kind of worked together but I think without the citizens keeping some things open, we had a gentleman, Bryson, today from Camp Bell, and he kept a culvert open. He said, I'm really trying to mobilize my neighbors to tell them during this, if there's a stick in your culvert, go get it out because it's just going to, I'm like, you go. <laughs> so it's helpful. I think we realize that there are some materials that um, that we need to acquire mm -hmm. to, to help us in that process, mm -hmm. like like one thing that came up quickly was like sandbags. Anybody got them? And nobody's like, nobody's got a sandbag, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe there's some of these supplies that we can start to put into our budget or yeah. get some grant money for yeah. to buy right. that exactly. we could have at an area for um, things like that. Like we ran into like big things that you run into then is signs, like oh. just to get signage up to say road closed or, you know, yeah. I mean, we're borrowing, stealing from, from everybody, everybody. can or cones or, you know, yeah. delineation devices. Yeah. So True. speaking of that, Joe wants to know when he's getting signs back, but <laughs> oh my God, um, but you know, there's a lot of, I think there's like material stuff that we could probably do better at uh, yeah, we, acquiring and maybe putting in a Connex box or something away that yeah. gets our emergency stash. So yeah, if we need it, we'll idea. only get into it at that because point. Because we did just buy more because we could, I asked through FEMA if we could do that, but it's, it's beyond comprehension for me when we had the amount of theft that we had people stealing cones oh, yeah. stealing stuff, moving signs road close signs writing on signs writing on <laughs> signs and and people stealing even the stakes that we painstakingly went out and drove in the ground and measured oh, yeah. and marked and this and that but i mean especially like up on camp bell i mean we lost tons everywhere findley here and there but on camp brook people who were stopping moving the cones stacking them up and throwing them in the hole i'm like yeah. you know and they're not kids no some and, of the and, no. And quickly you want to say uh, kids right but we we know in oh, certain yeah. instances that they are clearly not, not kids, kids. <laughs> so yeah i'm sure there are some yeah. kids that did stuff yeah but, but it's just you know really they're definitely adults you know that are doing it's that. a such a safety hazard mm. and we've had you know a lot of things stolen and so to me that's just i i guess i just wouldn't imagine ever doing that and and the accident that could cause and mm -hmm. um you know people don't understand until you work in the road that the vest that you have on doesn't do anything for you yeah. you know and does does fema offer the ability for us to acquire uh items like that to have on hand for the next event type deal no we're ordering them as the case of we needed them and maybe uh, we can keep them and put them away for another right time. so well we had so many stolen as out of some of the ones that pike gave us that had pavement on them luckily morgan said i lost 30 cones last night someone stole them and i was like you're kidding he goes well luckily they were all the pike cones that had pavement Sweet. on them i'm like oh i said do you know how big of a bill we're gonna have to pay them back yeah but people but i'm like you know and we found some in the woods and some over the bank and but some of them we didn't find and so i just in a hole and i've been meaning to ask my business partners if they know about this but there's a two stacks of traffic cones that just appeared behind our building recently oh really oh really and i was wondering yeah, if they, on yeah. well, one of them is like a new jersey department of transit and i was like uh, <laughs> where did this come from there's question. two it's maybe not even 10 of them total but it's like Serial. little stacks just well it's let us it, know it's like because i think we're missing a bunch i yeah, think well, dear say pike yeah. on them no if the, yeah if my partners say they're not they don't know they're where if you I'll let me know you guys please yeah please 
within this week, they just if appear. Goes like, mm -hmm. If someone has a stash of 50 cones, as Oscar, their house, go see Lindley. Yeah. I think she's been stealing cones. Well, Let's drive around. <laughs> if we, I, appre I appreciate. Yeah. I appreciate the update, yeah. but I'm That's wondering if we could to move me. ahead. Oh, he wants to move ahead. Yeah. So yeah. So if you see your neighbor has fifty cones, call me. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> I'll take care. It's nice to see you, Christy. Yeah. Uh, town manager's report left on there. I think so. Let me look at it. Um, Talked about the Macintosh the Mark grant. grant, the Brick Grant. But I really just gave you an update on all the grants. If anybody hasn't seen uh, the Volrec stairs and stuff, looks really mm -hmm. nice. They did a really good job on the backside of the ball field. There's stairs that yeah. used to be an old path. There's they built the well. They just finished them. I think literally what? Yeah, Friday. Night. Um, they look really great. They go up to the ball field. Mm -hmm. from the ball field up to the back of the church so no the town manager was just an update on all the grants so really and from the fact that rick and i had lister training but that was a rough day <laughs> that's it and then the minutes i don't think you have anything and the minutes from september 11th anybody have any amendments to that if not just need a motion to approve Dean, it's on you. I wasn't here. Second. Okay. Aye. All right. We're good. And there was a conservation commission, um, planning commission notes in there. Yeah. Recreation. And there was oh, a letter from Brian Wright. And there was um, the big thing I send you from White River Valley Climate Energy Prioritization that their last minutes were in there as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other business come before the board? I know was reminded in the minutes about our conversation about garbage. And wonder if there's any more information on that. No, I okay. talked to the lawyer briefly, and it'll be at least another meeting or two before I can get back to it. But I did okay. talk to him about it. So thank you. You're welcome. Great. Anything else? Move to adjourn before 8 p.m. <laughs> All right. Even with Dave not here? Okay. All in favor? All right. All right. Well, have a good night, everybody.